So Ethan, you know, uh, you've uh, spoken for years about your vision of the future where people are growing specialty chemovars um, that are being grown with a terpene mix and a cannabinoid mix that are specifically for different types of patients. And that uh, with, uh, you know, a little bit of time and a lot of effort, um, we would be able to get to these custom cultivars uh, for, these, for these different patients. But of course, the, the cannabis industry right now is, is kind of going in another way at the same time, <clears throat> which is moving towards um, uh, distillates and, 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 and terpenes and kind of putting them together in kind of a, a, a cocktail and trying to customize cannabis medicine for patients that way. As somebody who I know is very much into whole plant, what are your thoughts on trying to get to those goals of customized cannabis medicine through dis or isolates instead of through growing whole plants in, in, in one plant? Well, to me, that approach is a little bit backwards. Um, it is clear that uh, the cannabis plant has a very plastic genome. This is a way of saying that you can make it do anything if you take the time uh, to selectively breed it for specific components and combinations that you want. This has been amply demonstrated. That's always going to be better. In contrast, we have the situation now where many people are producing CBD uh, isolates. Um, they, they might use a hemp source, for example, um, and they realize that on the world market they can get $40 a gram for this material. But we know that many patients with a severe seizure disorder would go through that in a day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also been amply demonstrated that CBD alone, although it's a great medicine for severe epilepsy, for schizophrenia, um, we could do the same thing, probably a lot better with much lower doses of CBD when it's in combination uh, with its other natural friends, let's mm -hmm. say, the other components in cannabis. So a little bit of THC with a bigger amount of CBD is good for m very many conditions. Um, there was recently a meta-analysis. This is a situation in which someone reviews the literature and crunches all the numbers from multiple studies together to create an overall impression. Uh, so Fabrizio Pamplona did this in relation to a comparison between CBD as a pure drug versus CBD as an extract um, in treatment of severe epilepsy. What they found was um, that although there could be comparable levels of efficacy, that it would work for seizures about the same, the doses required for the CBD extracts with other components included were um, about 20% of what was required with CBD alone. And the side effects were much lower um, because at very, very high doses in combination with other drugs, uh, CBD can produce some drug-drug interactions that you just don't see at the lower doses when it's a whole plant medicine. Uh, so that's a factor. Now, what about the situation of um, using either a pure cannabinoid or a cannabis extract, and then adding terpenoids from uh, an outside source. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm really against this. Mm -hmm. First, it's often done with synthetic terpenoids from a chemical producer that were never designed for human consumption. And they might be 95% pure, but we don't know that what five percent is important. Yeah, it could be. We don't know what it is and what its potential toxicity could be. Uh, additionally, we don't know that it's going to be the same stereoisomer that cannabis produces. Um, molecules have three dimensional structures, and if it's turned the wrong way, if it's the mirror image, it can have a totally different effect. Wow. It can smell different. It can have different effects in the brain or other parts of the body. Um, so I realize what people are trying to do with this, but to me, it's vastly preferable to take the time and selectively breed cannabis for the components and proportions that uh, you wish to target. When I think about uh, people using isolates and putting them together um, 
to try to reach a, a clinical goal with a patient, <clears throat> it feels like a analog versus digital music to me, where if you're taking, you know, one part this terpene, one part THC, one part a couple of different, um, you know, minor cannabinoids and put them together, you're getting these zeros and ones. But with analog music, when you're putting a, a, a needle on a record, you get all of the depth of it instead of just the composite of the pieces. Um, is that an appropriate way to think about it? Well, maybe. Um, I like a lot of digital music, but uh, with respect to the plants, uh, it's my considered opinion uh, that a properly constituted extract is going to beat these combinations anytime. And clearly, if we're talking about development of a pharmaceutical, it has to be from one species. If we're combining species, that becomes a combination medicine. And then you're probably tripling or more of the work because you have to do toxicology analysis on each component separately and then all of them together and it becomes cost prohibitive. So if, um, let's say that we were talking about using these isolates as a bridge because these custom chemovars don't exist yet. Uh, I'm guessing they don't exist. <laughs> let me finish well, my quote. It's, and so, and so it's, I can see someone watching thinking to myself, well, in the short term, we're going to use, you know, terpenes and isolates together until we grow these plants. And I'm wondering, A, um, can that do more damage than help the patient? And B, if you know where these plants are, what are, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> well, the problem is that, yes, these plants exist, but uh, in uh, very limited jurisdictions. Um, for instance, uh, some of these types of chemovars that I'm describing are available in California and in Washington, D.C., but they're not generally available because our federal laws prohibit uh, these crossing state borders, let alone international borders. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that needs to happen. Um, I'm not in favor of um, combining external uh, synthetics uh, as a stopgap measure because again, uh, these are potentially toxic. The amounts used may not be proper at all. Um, and it's just not, uh, not a proper approach. Mm -hmm. um, last question on this. So um, for people who are uh, using isolates and terpenes to you know, try to have this bridge until these plants are more, um, more accessible, um, is there a way for them to know when they're reaching threshold points uh, that could um, you know, be toxic, like t offering terpene toxicity? Because you know, I know that it's, it's pretty well regarded that because we've had the relationship with the cannabis plant for so long, and it generally moves slowly in its changes, that we continually are checking in with the plant. Whereas if we grab a bunch of isolate and we put it together, we haven't had a long relationship with that particular combination. And so we put ourselves at more risk. Yeah, that, that's true. Um, people should keep in mind what the relative concentrations would be uh, under natural conditions. Uh, so if we have total cannabinoids in the 20% or 25% range, uh, many of the chemovars only still have about 1% or 2% terpenoids. 5%, which I've seen, is really good. Mm -hmm. um, so you can get to the point that it's a 5 to 1 ratio of cannabinoids to terpenoids. So people certainly shouldn't be exceeding that. Mm -hmm. Plus, they need to keep in mind that too much of a good thing is really possible. Mm. Uh, let's take the example of um, beta pinene, or I'm sorry, alpha pinene. Pinene um, is a bronchodilator. It opens up the lungs, but when there's too much, it's irritating to the lungs and can have a reverse effect, say, in someone who's asthmatic. A little bit of alpha pinene will counteract the short-term memory impairment that THC produces, but too much uh, potentially could be too stimulating. And we know that uh, acetylcholinesterase inhibitors, which is the activity that alpha pinene produces, uh, boosts memory in low amounts, but if the dose is excessive, they could make 
it more likely for someone to have a seizure. In other words, alpha-pinene has toxicity if the dose is too high. And the same thing would apply to any other terpenoid. Another example would be essential oils, which are combinations of terpenoids. Um, essential oil of lavender is okay to place on the skin, what's called using neat. Um, so if somebody has a burn and puts lavender essential oil, uh, that'll help with the burn um, and it won't be bad for the skin. However, many other essential oils would be caustic if applied directly to the skin, um, produce burning or other reactions. Um, so I really worry about safety in relation to these kinds of practices if people are not being cognizant of uh, the proper proportions or the need to uh, go slowly with these things. Yeah. And if you want to learn more about this, we actually have got a link to Dr. Russo's paper on this topic in the first comment below. Thank you, Dr. Russo.